There's this movie called Demolition Man, which is absolutely amazing. Especially when you consider that when it came out, critics hated it. And the reason they hated it is that this movie is supposed to show how a dystopian future looks like. And the critics thought that it's absurd. It's absolutely ridiculous. You will not get this type of future. But now as you're looking at this old movie from 2024, you realize that they couldn't have done a more accurate job to describe the trajectory that our liberal societies are heading towards. I can't show you the actual clip here because copyright, but if you go on YouTube and you search for this fascist crap makes me want to puke, you will see the scene in which the police officers are showing to the hero their technology. And their technology is actually very low-tech compared to what police officers today have. But they're basically capable of surveilling the entire city. That They have the ability to tap into various cameras and get live footage of what's going on. And this officer looks smug towards our hero, who is a cop that's coming from the past. And he says, how did you guys manage to do things back in the old day? To which Sylvester Stallone answers... We worked for a living. This fascist crap makes me want to puke. Now, again, critics absolutely disliked that movie because they thought it's absurd. They didn't think that in the future such a dystopia could exist because if you think about it, back in the day, there used to be laws against wiretapping. Like the government listening into someone's phone conversation or trying to read someone's letters in a free democratic society was considered absolutely unheard of. The concept of censoring a newspaper was something that the Soviets did, was something that the fascists did. It wouldn't be something which would happen in the United States of America, or Britain, or France, or any of the other Western countries. But nowadays, as we get to see, More and more people are reliant on modern technology, on this concept of smart cities, where everything is connected to the cloud. Your refrigerator, your security cameras, your phone, your computer, everything is connected online. And as we get to see, there are laws that do ban the government from wiretapping, but there are also laws that allow the government to ask these private companies to share all of your data. And as you get to see, it started a little bit in 2013. And as we are moving towards the future, the governments are asking for the data more rather than plateauing or witnessing a backwards trend. And you may ask, well, what's wrong with it? So so what if the government wants my data? Well, just a couple of weeks ago, The owner of Gab came out and he said that the German government is asking for the private data of one of their users because he insulted a politician calling her fat. So now the the German equivalent of the FBI is investigating this and they want to know the private data of that citizen. And he's not the only case where someone has gotten in trouble over shit they posted online. Especially in Britain, there have been people arrested for posting emojis. There have been people that got in trouble with the law for uh, posting rap limericks. So when I grew up, my parents were happy that the Soviet Union is over and that we don't live under socialism anymore, specifically because everyone was tracked. Everyone was under surveillance. Or at least the illusion that you're under surveillance existed. And nowadays it seems that people crave for that. Like, they want that again. So, which are the countries that are asking for people's personal data the most? Well, number one seems to be the United States. That's a little bit weird, isn't it? Like, you, you would expect Russia to be number one? Granted, China may be even more invasive into people's privacy than the United States. But because China doesn't use these uh, Silicon Valley companies, then maybe it's not part of the graph. 
But number two is Germany. Number three, Singapore. And then you have UK, France, Ireland. And sorry, my bad. I, I, I mistook the fact that number two is actually Germany. Now, take into account that uh, when the government requests for data, it can be for either reasons that most people would agree with, or it might be because the government is just passing more and more legislation that police the behavior of people online. So, for example, the United States doesn't have this, but as we discussed, like in Germany, if you insult a politician, it can be a crime. So, obviously, there's going to be more criminals that commit that, while in the United States, you won't have it because it's not a crime to insult the president or to insult uh, Nancy Pelosi. Now, one of the things that I find sad is the fact that this graph doesn't actually show the data that was requested with a warrant versus the data that was requested without a warrant. Because as we saw in the Twitter files, many times data was requested without a warrant. So for instance, what, what is the difference? Well, when they request data with a warrant, they usually have to specify exactly what they're looking for. They have to specify the time and date that their investigation covers. And they need to have a probable cause. When they ask without the warrant, many times the companies comply anyway. Like, for instance, uh, the American banks, I understand, complied with January 6th when they were just asked without being served the warrant. And they can provide all the information. And while this definitely can be used in order to stop actual crime, like let's say there's a kidnapping and the police wants to see the video footage of the people that have security cameras mounted in that area, it can also be used by more authoritarian government to crack down on political dissent. And it's also an ethical question because in my country, for instance, the reason that Andrew Tate's conversations are in the mainstream media and everyone is wondering like, wow, are, is the Romanian government really good at wiretapping? There is actually a law that says the government has the ability to ask the private companies for information and the private companies have to give it to them. So the, the corporations are legally obliged to respond to the Romanian government, but it needs a warrant, which means that you, the, the authorities have to convince a judge that the person should be under investigation and they have a probable cause. And more importantly, after the investigation is done, like let's say they didn't find anything, they actually have to tell the person that they wiretapped that this happened so that the person can have a legal recourse. Like if the person believes, hold out a little bit, you invaded my privacy and you had no reason to, they can actually sue the authorities. And that has happened in the past, which is why my country is not in the top 20 on this list. It's because the cops cannot abuse this system. Like they need to be sure that a crime is being committed to investigate someone and not just invade into people's privacy because the right to privacy is, should be a human right. I mean, allegedly it is, but <laughs> as we're moving towards the future, it seems that uh, it's becoming less and less. So the problem is that we are moving towards smart cities where everything is connected, everything is in the cloud, and the move is for the government to become more invasive. And it's becoming absolutely hilarious that if you want privacy, you need to go to the old methods. You need to just write a letter by hand or you should just call a phone or using a phone line uh, rather than to rely on modern technology. Because, again, our ancestors, they realized that the right of privacy is important. So they did pass all of these laws that prevented wiretapping. They, they prevented bogging. Uh, I mean, the Watergate scandal exists for a reason, right, in the United States. Uh, but now, those laws still exist. It's just that there's new technology that's better than the old one. And for some reason, people that live in our time didn't think that privacy is important. And uh, again, it, it really depends on what they are using it for. Like, as I mentioned before, a kidnapping, sure. Right? Like, there's a person that's kidnapped. It's, it's an ongoing event. They need to find the person right away. Uh, so they get to use uh, the cloud and, and they get to look at uh, all of the DoorDash cameras in order to figure out what's going on. Okay, perfect. 
But then you have like uh, a person insulting a politician, uh, calling them fat or whatever, and now the government is actively looking into the person. I, I think that's an abuse. I definitely do. But um, it doesn't matter what I think. What matters is that uh, these are the stats. And as you can see, Apple is apparently the biggest culprit, uh, followed by Google and Microsoft seems to be uh, a little bit closer to the bottom. But, you know, things are predisposed to change. Uh, and also take into account that it also matters what type of data they're asking for, right? So, like, if they want to see DoorDash, they will go to that company, right? They're not going to, to look for Google. But if they want to see what's on your phone, well, then they can go for Apple. I remember when uh, they used to say that Apple is uh, uh, more secure than other phones. I mean, I guess. Take into account that someone's phone doesn't just tell that person... Um, what, what phone numbers they have, what contacts, what messages. No, no, no. It also tells the location of that person. And a company that works with Meta recently came out and said, yeah, uh, people's phones, even when on standby, do have microphones, and we actually use those microphones in order to listen in so that we can promote advertisement to people. So in other words, when you're walking around and you're carrying your phone, you have a bug strapped on you the whole time. And even if you leave your house without a phone, there are other people around you that have phones. So I don't know if the government actually listens to that data yet, but given the trend, given where we're at, I wouldn't be surprised if we're moving there. Now, what's interesting is that I remember two years ago when the war in Ukraine started, there were video footage of police officer in Moscow Stopping people on the street just to check their phones. So, like, the police would, would ask for random citizens to unlock their phones so they can see what those people were messaging. So they can see if those people were supporting Putin or not. And everyone in the West was horrified. Everyone in the West was like, well, what an authoritarian state. Like, that is horrible. How can people live like that? Why don't they rise up? Meanwhile, in the West, the police doesn't stop people on the street because they don't need to. They just ask the companies and the companies comply. And there used to be also people uh, horrified about what's happening in China and saying that China has a surveillance state. And look, there's cameras everywhere and facial recognition and it's so horrible, which it is. But are we that different? And is the trend going to plateau at one point? Like, are we going to see a place where the government is satisfied with the number of requests that they have, and, and, and it's constant. Uh, or hopefully it would just go back down to the where it used to be in 2014, at least. So, so that the government only uses this as a nuclear option when they exhausted every single possibility they have in order to try to catch someone, and this is the only thing that's left. Yeah, sure. Or do they do it because they're lazy, as in Demolition Man? It's like... Uh, how did you used to do this in the past without this? It's like, wait, well, we worked for a living. And take into account that what, what I find the most fascinating, right, is that when you're looking at the trend and you notice that uh, the United Kingdom is number four, despite all of this surveillance, they still have terrorist attacks. Despite all of this surveillance, they still have stabbings. How do they justify this? Like, they, they have every single opportunity to catch bad guys more so than every other police officer that was born in their country 10 years ago and before that. And yet, despite all of this, they still cannot prevent people from stabbing each other. Or the United States, right? Like, despite all of this, they still have mass shooters. Despite the fact that they're number one when it comes to surveilling people and then when it comes to having access to all the information that people have, they still don't manage to stop crime. In fact, some people can argue that crime is higher now than it used to be. How do they justify that? Who's being held responsible for it? And finally, uh, this explains why Rumble, this explains why Telegram, this explains why so many other platforms who guarantee some level of security for their users are under constant attack. It's why Elon Musk is disliked. 
And uh, yeah, I do find it concerning. But it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.